This is CNN Breaking News. Thanks for joining us on CNN News Central this afternoon. We begin with breaking news. A judge has upheld the criminal indictment against former President Donald Trump in Georgia. The judge there rejecting the argument that Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election were protected under the First Amendment. CNN's Zachary Cohen is part of the team that broke this story. Zach, walk us through this decision by Judge Scott McAfee. Yeah, Bill, Boris, you'll remember that we heard um, and we watched a hearing in Fulton County, Georgia, just about a week ago. And Trump's lawyers argued strenuously that this entire case should be thrown out because, in his argument, that the political speech and that the um, claims about voter fraud that Trump was pushing after the 2020 election are protected by the First Amendment. Now, the judge today roundly rejecting that argument, as we've seen him do multiple other times in this case for other defendants in Georgia, saying, look, quote, the defense has not presented nor is the um, court able to find any authority that the speech and conduct alleged is protected political speech. He goes on to say that this argument is one that should be heard by a jury, not one that should be decided during pretrial motions. That was the argument that prosecutors in Georgia made about a week ago in court before Judge McAfee. So this is just an example of this case in Georgia inching towards a potential trial. We know that the DA there has asked for a trial to start on August 5th, but Judge McAfee has not put Put a start date on the calendar yet. That really is the big thing we're looking for. But again, the judge continuing to work through these pretrial motions in Georgia, continuing to work toward and, um, and address these issues that have to be addressed before a trial can take place. And Zach, uh, Judge McAfee is not the first judge to make a ruling like this related to Trump's efforts to overturn the 2020 election being related to the First Amendment. Judge Tanya Chutkin also rejected uh, that argument from Trump's attorneys in the federal case against him for election subversion. Uh, I'm wondering, have you heard anything from Trump's Georgia attorneys about this decision, how they plan to proceed? Um, Trump, Trump's lead attorney in Georgia, Steve Sadow, has immediately declined to comment on this ruling. I'm sure we'll hear from him eventually because he did push and he was the main person, the main defense attorney arguing this in court when we saw this hearing take place just about a week ago. And look, Steve Sadow has filed a several, several similar motions to try to get this case thrown out before a trial even happens. Um, obviously, you know, Trump is fighting multiple, fr multiple legal fronts, as you mentioned. He tried the same argument in his federal case with Judge Tanya Chuckin, who similarly rejected the First Amendment arguments. And when we saw the hearing take place in Georgia, um, you know, prosecutors uh, referenced Chutkin's ruling on this First Amendment issue, too. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a similar argument that some of Trump's co-defendants in Georgia have also tried to make and was also rejected by Scott McAfee. So we're going to have to see there's other attempts and uh, unaddressed attempts and motions on the table still to try to get this case dismissed. But for now, the case and the indictment against Trump in Georgia remains intact. Zach Cohen, thank you so much for the update. We have CNN Sarah Murray with us. She's part of the team that broke this story. Sarah, walk us through some of the details. Yeah, well, look, we heard these arguments last week, especially from Trump attorney Steve Sadow, saying that, you know, everything Donald Trump did in the state of Georgia to overturn the 2020 election should just be covered under the First Amendment. It's protected political speech, the, and the indictment should just be tossed out. The judge today ruling he is not going to throw out the indictment. He did have some comments about how essentially using this speech in furtherance of an alleged crime means that it is not protected under the First Amendment. He made that very clear. Now, he didn't rule out the possibility that defendants, including former President Trump, could bring this up later, potentially at a trial in front of the jury. And we heard from Trump attorney Steve Sadow today saying, while they disagree with this ruling from the judge, they're going to look at their other options moving forward, guys. And so the timeline here, what is the latest on this? When might this actually get started? You know, it's a great question. Sarah, it, uh, tell us <laughs> yeah. everything I, you know. I'm going to look into the tea leaves here. Look, what we it know. Was a crystal ball look. Yeah, what we know is Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis wants to get this trial underway. She's made it clear that she is ready to go to trial as soon as August. And of course, the Trump team is happy to let this take as long as possible. And we have not heard from the judge. It's up to him when he wants to set this trial date. He's been a little bit skeptical about the notion that Trump and his 14 remaining co-defendants should all go to trial together. But he hasn't made any comments recently about a potential trial date or how he might want to split up this bucket of remaining co-defendants. There's also speculation out there, partly because of his ruling on Fonnie Willis being able to stay on the case, that we may see a gag order, a filing 
asking for a gag order on the DA from the Trump team. Is, is, what are you hearing from sources about that? That's right. My colleagues Zach Cohen and Jason Morris and I are reporting out that there have been some discussions among defendants for these Trump allies and their attorneys sort of saying, is it time for us to go to the judge and say, you know, you got to gag Fan Fannie Willis. You can't have her out here making comments about this case. She's appeared at a number of events. She's suggested that some of the scrutiny that she's getting is racially motivated. In his ruling, Judge McAfee allowing Fonnie Willis to stay on the case, he all but invited defense attorneys to come to him and ask for a gag order. He said it might be time to preclude any kind of public comments. Now, they still have this appeal going on. They're still trying to get Willis disqualified from the case. So a number of attorneys are kind of like, you know, let's wait and see if we can get her kicked off entirely. That would be our, our preferred outcome here. But in the meantime, this is something that they're sort of discussing. The other caveat here, no, no defendants in this case want this to boomerang back around. <laughs> they don't want a judge to say, okay, Fonnie Willis can't talk about the case, but neither can Donald Trump, mm. neither can Rudy Giuliani, neither can Georgia GOP Chair David Schaefer. These are all people who have been out here talking about the case and Fonnie Willis on social media and in interviews. That's a really, really interesting point, Sarah. Thank you so much for that. I want to go now to Kara Scannell in New York, and I know, Kara, you have some new reporting concerning the bond that Trump paid in a separate case, the fraud case there. What have you learned? Right. This is the fraud case involving the New York Attorney General's office. And Trump posted the $175 million bond on Monday night. Now the New York Attorney General's office is saying that they want more information and they want more information because the underwriter of that bond, Knight Specialty, is based in California and it's not regulated by New York. And so they want to ensure that this this bond will actually uh, can be backed and supported by the underwriter. Now, the head of the company, Don Henke, told my colleague Matt Egan that Trump had posted $175 million in cash as collateral. But the New York Attorney General's office is saying because this company is not regulated here, they can't get a certificate from the New York regulators ensuring that they're financially sound. So they want more information from the bond underwriter and from Trump about what is backing this bond. And they say that they want this within 10 days or else the bond is not valid. So again, putting more pressure on Trump to come up with this. Now, I just spoke with a lawyer who does a lot of these bond deals, and he told me that, you know, this is an appropriate step by the New York Attorney General's office. And the options that Trump has is either getting, pairing up with another company that is regulated in New York, that is allowed to do these types of bonds in New York, or getting a court to agree to this. So, you know, again, this will be more filings before Judge Arthur N. Gorin, who has overseen this case. Uh, but the AG's office now challenging this bond and challenging whether or not the company can support the bond should they ultimately prevail after this appeal. Brianna, Boris? Kara Scannell from New York, thank you so much. Let's bring in CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Jennifer Rogers. Jennifer, your reaction to this request uh, in New York uh, and Letitia James, this move, this skepticism that she apparently has about the bond company and whether they can financially back Trump. Yeah, well, Letitia James has been skeptical of Trump all along. We've seen it, and it looks like she's just trying to do what she can to ensure that if the uh, attorney general's office wins the appeal and the judgment stays as it is, that they'll be able to collect. Now, of course, the amount of the bond is much less than the amount of the judgment that Judge Ngoron found uh, was ill-gotten gains. So she still will have to go after the Trump Organization and the other defendants in order to collect the balance of that money. But she wants to make sure that at least the first $175 million is easy to get. So it seems appropriate to me, and uh, we'll see what steps need to be taken to ensure that that money is there and available for the people of the state of New York. And uh, Jen, Trump's lawyer, Steve Sadow, just reacted to the Georgia ruling. He says the defense will continue to evaluate our options regarding the First Amendment challenges. And the court's ruling made clear that defendants were not foreclosed from, again, raising the challenge, which indeed they were not. Uh, what do you think about this? What other challenges could be in the works? Well, this First Amendment challenge is one that Team Trump has made in every single case. The notion that because he was the president and because he's a presidential candidate and because he opens his mouth and words come out, everything that he says should be protected is something that they've been pressing in all the cases. And it's not really about the merits, Brianna. I mean, there's no question that 
evidence can be used of speech that is made by defendants in the course of committing crimes. This to me is just more of a delay tactic. They're just trying to find ways that they can appeal and delay these proceedings. So that's what this is, is all about. I mean, you can't say if, if, if Trump robbed a bank and walked in and said, I'm running for president, let me tell you about how great I am, and by the way, stuff some bags full of money because I'm robbing this bank, there's no question that you can put that speech in, even if it's sort of intertwined with political speech. So the merits are a no-go. Um, this is just all about pushing every avenue they possibly can to delay these things and possibly to get some of these arguments in front of the jury in some capacity. The prosecutor's job then will be to get a very strong instruction from the judge about what the limits of political speech are and how criminal speech is not protected by the First Amendment.